Dear students, I am Bharat Kashyap, lecturer Biology, LGSSS, Majwar District, Mandi. Today I am going to teach you 8th chapter of Biology, Human Health and Diseases. And today's topic is Vaccination, Allergies, Autoimmunity and Immune System. Today's topic, vaccination. Let us have some introduction of vaccine. First of all, what is a vaccine? Vaccine is an extract of dead, attenuated or weakened germs of a disease or antigen which is introduced into a healthy person to provide immunity by forming antibodies. Thus, the vaccines are also called antibodies provoking agents. Now, what is vaccine? The introduction of vaccine into an individual to provide protection against a disease is called vaccination. These vaccines or antigens generate the primary immune response of low intensity and form memory B and T cells. When the vaccinated person is attacked by the same pathogen, the existing memory T and B cells recognize the antigen quickly and attack the pathogen with large production of lymphocytes and antibodies. This is called secondary immune response and it is of high intensity. Then passive immunization. In case if quick immune response is required, we directly inject the preformed antibodies or antitoxins or antivenoms into the body of the patient. This is called passive immunization. For example, in case of tetanus and snake bites, the patient is injected with preformed antibodies for quick relief. Now, question may arise Does vaccination or immunization means the same? No. Vaccination means only administration of a vaccine or toxoid into a person. Whereas, immunization means the process by which the body of an individual produces antibodies against the vaccine. The principle of immunization by vaccination is based on the property of memory of immune system. Now let us discuss types of vaccines. First one is attenuated whole agent vaccines. In this type of vaccines, living but attenuated or weakened microbes are used as vaccines. For example, Sabin polio vaccine and MMR vaccines which are used against measles, mumps and rubella diseases. Then inactivated whole agent vaccines. These use microbes that have been killed by formalin. Inactivated virus vaccines include rabies, influenza, the salk polio vaccine. Inactivated bacterial vaccines. These include pneumococcal pneumonia, the pneumonia caused by streptococcus pneumonia bacteria, cholera, typhoid, etc. Then toxoids. These are inactivated toxins produced by pathogens. For example, vaccines against tetanus and diphtheria are of ty this type. Then subunit vaccines. Here only antigenic fragments of microbes that stimulate immune response are used. They are produced by genetic modification techniques 
and called recombinant vaccines for example hepatitis b vaccine produced from yeast then dna vaccines they are newest and most promising vaccines but no commercial vaccine yet produced for humans vaccines are also classified as follows first generation vaccines these are produced by conventional methods these may be attenuated or weakened live vaccines for example smallpox vaccine of jenner then heat killed or inactivated vaccines for example salks polio vaccine then toxoids or detoxified toxins as vaccines for example tetanus toxoid then second generation vaccines these are vaccines made of pure surface antigens of pathogen only which are multiplied through recombinant dna technique for example hepatitis b vaccine produced from yeast by recombinant dna technology act against hepatitis b virus which cause jaundice and liver cancer then third generation vaccines these are recent synthetic vaccines these are included in immunization programs which helped to completely eradicate the deadly disease diseases like smallpox and decreases the frequency of others like pneumonia polio tetanus diphtheria etc now hypersensitivity or allergies let us define allergy an allergy is the hypersensitivity of immune system of a person to some foreign substance called allergen which either comes in contact with or enters the body now types of allergens the common allergens are dust pollen spores feathers fur venom some foods and some drugs now let us discuss mechanism of allergies it involve following three steps first is sensitization in this step allergen act as a mild antigen to stimulate the formation of ige type of antibodies which binds to the mast cells of connective tissue now second stimulation when the allergen again comes in contact with body now the allergen combined with antibody bound mast cells which rupture to release histamine and serotonin then the histamine cause hypersensitivity or allergy now symptoms of allergy general symptoms of allergy are inflammation of mucous membranes then sneezing running eyes nose irritation of throat and trachea itching skin rashes etc are some of the common symptoms of allergy now let us understand mechanism of allergic reactions with the help of this diagram this is showing initial exposure to allergens allergen is pollen grain here and it enters into the blood stream and now in blood stream the b cells differentiate into plasma cells and make antibodies these antibodies now attach with mast cells found in connective tissue then secondary exposure to same allergen takes place and 
the allergen pollen grains now binds to binds to antibodies on mast cells and they make these mast cells to rupture and histamine is released from these mast cells and we know histamine releases and it begins the hypersensitivity or allergic reactions so allergy takes place then types of allergies first type is hay fever it is due to pollens and spores of plants it is characterized by increased secretion from mucosa of nose throat and conjunctivitis which results in redness of eyes then asthma it is characterized by narrowing of bronchi of lungs and results in difficulty in breathing most common allergens are house dust pet animals foods like eggs fish drugs like aspirin and air pollutants now anaphylactic shock it is a systemic allergic reaction which affect all the body tissues and may be due to some poisons like bee sting or some drugs like penicillin or some foods which are taken orally now prophylaxis how can we protect from the allergies the specific allergen should be identified and avoided it can be diagnosed by avoidance test skin prick test and patch test etc now treatment by desensitization process called immunotherapy the antihistamine pills which nullify histamine and gives relief steroids and adrenalines are also recommended against allergies now next topic is autoimmunity we know acquired immunity found in higher vertebrates is due to memory cells the immunity which we acquire in lifetime these have the ability to differentiate foreign organisms from body own cells or self cells this can be understood by following two possible explanations most of the experimental immunology reveals that higher vertebrates can distinguish foreign molecules as well as foreign organisms sometimes due to genetic or some unknown reasons the body attacks self cells this results in damage to the body and is called autoimmune disease for example rheumatoid arthritis in this disease which affects many people in our society is an autoimmune disease there is pain swelling and deformity of joints takes place then chronic anemia when own rbcs are destroyed then myasthenia gravis when own muscle cells are destroyed so this is the topic of autoimmunity now let us discuss immune system in the body it recognizes foreign antigens responds and remembers them it plays a role in allergic reactions autoimmune diseases and organ transplants it has following parts lymphoid organs these are the organs where origin maturation and proliferation or growth of lymphocytes takes place 
Now, primary lymphoid organs. These include bone marrow and thymus, where immature lymphocytes differentiate into antigen sensitive lymphocytes. Then, secondary lymphoid organs. Those organs where fully differentiated lymphocytes migrate to interact with specific antigens, then proliferate to form effector cells which show immune response. These organs are spleen, lymph nodes, tonsils, pairs, patches of small intestine and appendix. The bone marrow. It is the main lymphoid organ where all blood cells including lymphocytes are formed. The thymus. It is lobed organ located near the heart and beneath the breastbone. You can look in this diagram here. This is thymus. The thymus reduces in size with age and becomes very small at puberty. Both bone marrow and thymus help in maturation of T lymphocytes. Then spleen. This is the spleen. It is a large bean shaped organ. It mainly contains lymphocytes and phagocytes. It acts as a filter of the blood by trapping blood-borne microorganisms. Spleen also has a large reservoir of erythrocytes. Next is the lymph nodes. Look at the diagram. These structures, these are the lymph nodes. These are small solid structures located at different points along the lymphatic system. Lymph nodes serve to trap the microorganisms or other antigens of lymph and tissue fluid. Antigens trapped in the lymph nodes activate lymphocytes and produce immune response. And now the lymphoid tissue. The masses of lymphoid tissue present in mucus lining of respiratory, digestive, and urinogenital tracts. These are called mucosa associated lymphoid tissue or MALT. MALT constitutes about 50% of the lymphoid tissue in human body. These are called BALT or bronchial associated lymphoid tissue when present in walls of trachea and bronchi. Whereas these are called GALT or gut associated lymphoid tissue when present in wall of ileum. These are also named as pears patches. With this we come to close of today's lecture. I do hope you must have understood it properly. Thanks for watching.